What's up guys? Welcome back to Metal in Motion. So I wanted to uh, go over a quick video on uh, riding mower buying guide. Obviously we're coming into spring. You guys are, look at all that crap. Man, I got a lot of junk to clean up. You guys are, are tired of push mowing for last season or the, the riding mower you've got, you're just sick and tired of throwing money into it and you want to get something else. How do you know you're not going to get the same piece of junk mower that you've already got? So let's talk about cosmetics. Obviously when you're looking through Facebook Marketplace, the, the real shiny ones, that's the ones that we're always looking for, the ones that look like they've been uh, you know, meticulously taken care of. And obviously, they probably are good. They probably have been meticulously taken care of. Um, when you come across a mower that's, that's faded paint and um, you know, the seat might have a crack or two in it, um, you're getting into more stuff. You, know, you might say, well, it's just got some, some uh, paint problems. You know, I can live with that. Well, there might be more than just paint problems. When you have... Uh, faded plastics like let's let's switch over to here when you get a mower it starts getting faded plastics and faded paint that means it's been sitting out in the weather too long your seats are going to start getting brittle uh, this one is fine yeah see how that's nice and pliable um, that seat there is stiff and it's getting a crack on it so the other thing is too is plastics get brittle when they get sun sorry my peg leg here taking a little longer to get around plastics get brittle when they sit out in the sun and spots like this where the the mainframe bolts to the plastic fenders and hood and stuff this will split you'll get cracks in this your hood starts really breaking up little screens like this will start turning yellow and or you'll get water down inside there and these things won't work other things to consider when something is faded sat out in the weather key switches rain's going straight into there throttle cables and choke cables. I mean, look at that thing. That thing doesn't even hardly want to move. Ah. So that's some things to consider when looking at a used mower, uh, if it's got faded plastics or if it looks like it's been out in the weather. The other thing to consider, all that rain is gonna go somewhere. It's gonna sit on top of things. Look at how that one's designed. If that seal is not good or that, a lot of times these little black caps come off, rain right into your tank now you're getting rain in, the, in your gas tank now you're getting it down into your carb you could potentially be into carb problems um, but water is going to stand in all this kind of spaces here i mean there's some holes there where it can drain but you're going to get water in this you're going to get water in this up here and on some models you'll get water in your bearings and so now your spindle bearings are going to take a beating they're going to get moisture in them and you're going to be replacing spindle bearings so that's something to consider. Cosmetics is more than just looks. You say, well, I can deal with some looks. Well, that's fine, but you might be dealing with more than that. All right, throw open the hood. Let's see what we got. If you throw open the hood and your gut tells you to just walk away, close the hood and walk away. Um, if you're still standing here, open up the oil. Take a look at the oil stick. Look at that oil. If you rub that oil on your finger, it's clear. Okay, this is a this could be anything from a fresh oil change to, you know, a couple months into the season. Uh, this could be something that the customer didn't want you to see how black the oil was, and so he just drained it and put brand new oil in it. You don't know, but better to see fresh oil than crazy black oil. Look at this one over here. Let's see what color this one is. All right, that's pretty black. That to me is about two or three seasons black. So obviously something like that just tells you that that's not been maintained quite as well as this one, potentially, unless they just tried pulling one over on you and changing the oil. So be aware of the oil color. If it's light brown, you know, or clear, it's been changed. If it's dark black, and sometimes if you, it'll get so black that when you wipe it on you, it doesn't come off very easy. That means the detergents in the oil have been spent. And uh, that's definitely a sign that the oil has been in there way too long. Pull the air filters off. Air filters always come with a pre-filter. Nine times out of 10, they come with a pre-filter. You can wipe your hands across it. If it disintegrates, it's been on there too long and that's uh, not been replaced. Look at the filters. You can look in the louvers and see how much dirt and debris is in there. This one is not horrendous. I hold mine up to the sun, which I don't have any sun here, but you can see light through it. And you can tell, and the more plug that is, uh, you know, you're not gonna be able to see any light through it. So this is not, horrendous you could probably get another season out of that maybe uh, if you've got a wrench for the spark plug i recommend pulling the spark plug out not only can you tell you know is the spark plug new or old but is it black is it oily black is it dry powdery black dry powdery black means that the oil the air filter has probably been in there too long the choke might be stuck 
uh, closed and that engine is running richer than it should and it's carbon fouling the spark plug. If you pull that spark plug out and it is oily black, screw the thing back in and walk away. Once they get start getting oil uh, on the spark plug, it's leaking past the um, the piston rings, and uh, you're just you're not going to get a lot of life out of it, in my opinion. I mean, you can run it for several years. You're going to be topping off the oil all the time. It's going to be smoking, and um, you know, I would walk away if it was me. Uh, the other thing to consider, crank it up, hear how it runs, make sure there's no loud noises or knocks. If it smokes right off the get-go, like you crank it up, it's going to puff out some smoke. In my book, that's not the end of the world. That means your valve guides are getting a little bit of wear in them. Um, you know, I mean, you could replace a head if it was a overhead valve, one like this one. <clears throat> if you wanted to, I wouldn't do it. I mean, it's not worth it to me. But if it continually smokes, um, I just walk away. I mean, again, your piston rings are letting too much oil past and uh, spark plugs burning off that oil. So that's a deal breaker for me. Deal breakers for me is oil on the spark plug, smoking machine driving all around, or if you start adding up all these little things that you're finding and it's more more value than, than what you're fixing to pay for the mower, he's not willing to come down on his price, well, then that's also a deal breaker. Okay, so spark plug, air filter, oil, that'll give you an idea on that. Uh, let's drop down here, see if I can get you, see if I can get you under here. It's just, oops, wrong one. Hang in with me, guys. There we go. I'll get you up in here. Let me get my light on my pocket. I'm trying to do this with my broken foot. So, all right, belts, belts and pulleys. And while you're under here, you might as well inspect the deck. Look at all that debris in there. Move that debris aside. Make sure there's no rust holes. Make sure there's nothing that's, uh, you know, you're going to see. Look how the pulleys, see the pulleys are rusted. Those pulleys being that rusted on a brand new belt like this, this is a brand new belt. Turn the belt over. This is a stiff belt. This is a 5 8 inch belt. This thing is stiffer. A lot of them are half inch. Man, there we go. Check it for cracks across the inside. And you want to follow that belt all the way around. There it goes there. Either rotate it or follow it around with your eyes. Make sure there's no cracks in it. There's obviously no pulleys other than those right there. There's no extra little idler pulleys on this deck to check. But if there were, um, you would want to try to either take the belt loose or get a little slack in it and spin those pulleys to hear how they sound. If they sound gristly or they have a roar to them or they, they spin a little bit and they snag up, uh, you're going to have to replace them. That's going to be something. It's a, an additional cost. There's the drive belt right there, right here. Do the same thing with it as well as there's a pulley. So I want to be able to, uh, if you push the parking brake, lock the parking brake down, it'll put some slack in this. And you can either rotate this drive belt around and check it for cracks, as well as um, it'll put some slack in it to be able to spin the pulleys. And you want to check the, uh, the drive pulleys as well. They need to be quiet. They need to be smooth. If you get a roaring pulley, uh, you may not get through the season. Uh, but something like this, you would definitely want to at least take some Scotch-Brite. Uh, look at that one there. And clean that up because the second you run this that rust is going to chowder up this belt and uh, potentially ruin a good belt all right so we're right here let me get you back up on this thing get my peg leg up here all right you're here let's take a look at the belt or not the belt I just did that let's take a look at the uh, blade if you can uh pull this up <clears throat> can you guys see that in there Okay, there's the blade. Grab a hold of the blade okay. and move the blade up and down and feel if there's any slack or clunking of the, of the uh, blade. If there is, that means that the bearings in the spindle, usually the bottom bearing takes a beating before the top one does and you'll get slack in it. Um, you, you'll know that you'll have to be replacing those bearings. So you can either place a whole spindle or you can take the spindle apart, just put new bearings in it, but that's something that's gonna add to the cost of, of the mower. The other thing is look at the blade itself. Make sure it's not too skinny, like it's been worn down. You can tell the uh, where the blade bolts, where the big bolt in the middle of it, that's how fat it originally was. And as you get toward the end, the more they sharpen it, the skinnier that, that's going to get. And the other thing, look how thick it is. Because an old blade where the grass and, and everything has rubbed over it for years or however long is going to have trenches, little divots, little ditches in it, or it's going to be razor sharp like this one is actually getting quite sharp on the edge because it's getting so thin and that's a sign that you might have to replace Whew, i'm out of breath guys this leg man wears me out um 
but you turn around. That's a sign that you're gonna have to uh, probably replace some bl blades. Okay, so what do we check? We've checked engine, air filter, oil, spark plug. Um, climbing under there, we've checked pulleys, we've checked uh, the belts, we've checked the top of the deck for rust, we've checked the blade um, for thickness and wear, and we've checked the bearings. Um, obviously, we'd want to run the mower, turn the blades on. If it sounds loud, like the deck should sound pretty smooth. If there's a lot of vibration when the deck is running, that means your blades are probably out of balance and you can just sharpen. Every time you sharpen a blade, you have to balance the blade. It's like a car tire. So I sharpen and balance all my blades. I've had actually on several occasions, two occasions, that the blade, because of how much vibration it had, rattled the bolt loose in the middle. Um, it wasn't so much on the star-shaped uh, ones. It was on the ones where it's just the bolt clamps onto the blade, but it has happened. It scared me half to death. So um, tires, tires are gonna be the other thing to check. So tires are roughly $40 for front tires, roughly $65, $70 for the rear tires. If the tire tread is good, they just have cracks in the sidewalls, you can throw a tube in them and uh, keep running the tire a little bit longer, but you're gonna eventually have to buy new tires. So the other thing is steering. If you got a tire that's wore on the inside or the outside, um, that's a sign that your, your bearings, uh, maybe somebody hit the front of it and they drove it in and, and it's all out of alignment. Uh, a lot of times when the bearings go bad, that wheel is going to turn, it's going to lay out like this because the weight of the mower pushing it down is going to squat it out. And that's a sign that bearings are bad, bushings are bad. If you have a mower and you turn it all the way one direction, and you turn it all the way the other direction and it turns sharper one way. Say it turns that sharp there, all right? But when you turn it the other way, it only turns to there instead of coming all the way here. A lot of times that means that somebody's ran into something and they've bent either the tie rod or they've even bent the axle on it and it's turning sharper one way or the other. So if you're getting into uh, steering and, and stuff like that, I mean, on some mowers like that Craftsman there, uh, you can get like a whole steering kit maybe for, you know, $125 on eBay or something like that. But again, this is stuff that you have to be aware of because if you're paying $450 for a riding mower and now you're finding all this stuff he needs to drop his price or you need to walk away um, Steering as far as slack. This is very good When it comes to slack uh, So I wouldn't be afraid of any anything like that. Ah, look at that good grief. That's a ton of slack I don't know why that's so loose, but um, that would that would uh, need to be checked out so What have we covered? What else is there? Batteries. You can look at the battery to know if uh, how old it is. If it's a four-year-old battery, I'd be shocked. Seems like the batteries on these things only last about two years. But uh, if it's like a, you know, what are we, 2021. If it was a 2017 battery, uh, you're going to be buying a battery soon. So just factor that in. So deal breakers. Deal breakers are smoking, oil on the spark plug threads, and really just any of the, like, add everything up. Okay, it's gonna need a belt. It's gonna need some bearings. I got a, a couple pulleys that are bad. I got a tire in the front that needs to be addressed. Okay, unfortunately, if you're gonna do it yourself, you can save money. Otherwise, you're gonna pay a mechanic. So now you're at a $150, and he's charging me $350 or $400 for the riding mower. It's not worth it. I'm shopping somewhere else. So that's kind of uh, my train of thought anyways. That's what I think. Anyways, uh, feel free to uh, leave some more things if you guys have any other advice or something that I forgot. You guys like to look for when you're buying used riding mowers, put it down in the comments. Otherwise, uh, hopefully that'll give you guys some direction and some stuff to look for when you're buying a new riding mower for this year. So anyways, I'm Josh with Metal in Motion. We'll catch you guys next time.